the movie opens up late at night, when Cameron and Janice Hooker, a married couple, go to a dark forest to hide a dead body. Janice is scared and holds her prayer beads tightly, feeling guilty about what they've done. But her cruel husband, Cameron, tries to comfort her, saying it was an accident and they didn't mean to hurt anyone. After burying the body, they quickly leave the area before the sunrise. The scene then fasts forward to a year later, where a beautiful girl, Colleen Stan, is attempting to hitchhike a ride to Westwood, California. After a while, a couple drives by the same road. They happen to be none other than Cameron and Janice. Colleen requests for a ride, and they happily accept. During the journey, the couple asks Colleen some questions and finds out that she wants to surprise her best friend in Westwood. Moreover, no one knows that she is going there. For some reason, this delights Cameron and he stops by a gas station to take a break. While Colleen goes to use the restroom, Cameron creepily takes out a wooden box from the trunk and puts it in the back seat of the car. Colleen returns shortly after and notices the box, but she doesn't think much of it. They then continue driving, and Cameron suggests visiting the ice caves before going to Westwood. Colleen is a bit skeptical about the idea, as she wants to reach California before it gets dark, but having no other options left, she agrees. Following this, they stop the car in a lonely place. Janice leads the way to the caves, but Colleen starts to sense that something is not right. Suddenly, Cameron pulls out a knife and holds it against her neck. He then blindfolds her, handcuffs her hands, and pushes her back into the car. That's not all, he even places her head inside the wooden box, so that she can't see where they're taking her. In the next scene, the couple brings Colleen to their house in Red Bluff. Once there, Cameron undresses the poor girl and ties her up. He then brutally whips her while Janice watches in horror. Cameron gets excited by the violence and screams, indicating that he is a psychopath. After he is done for the day, Cameron chains Colleen to a table and puts her head back inside the box, leaving her trapped and terrified. Early the next morning, Janice anxiously approaches her husband, seeking clarity on their plans for Colleen. Cameron replies that they'll dispose of her when he grows tired of her. He then heads to work, leaving Janice alone with her doubts and worries. During the day, the sound of Colleen's tearful cries interrupts Janice's moments of peace. So, she goes downstairs to confront the situation. Colleen pleads desperately, promising not to tell anything to the police if they release her. However, despite her pleas, Janice shows no remorse and simply walks away. Later at night, Cameron returns home, attending to Colleen's basic needs while simultaneously beating and assaulting her. Janice, unable to bear the anguish screams, wears headphones with loud volume. After he is done with his cruel antics, Cameron gets tired and goes to bed. But before he can fall asleep, Janice approaches him with her concerns. She worries that keeping Colleen with them is not such a good idea. She is like a ticking time bomb who may explode at any time. However, Cameron completely rebuffs Janice's claims and instead reminds her of the vows she took with him during marriage. He also tells her that he will not get intimate with Colleen. He only wants to use her as a slave to fulfill his needs and desires. Later at midnight, Cameron constructs a coffin-like box and cruelly locks Colleen inside. He also connects an oxygen pipe to the coffin, allowing the victim to breath and remain alive. Imprisoned within the claustrophobic box, Colleen's mind wanders into a realm of hallucinations, longing for freedom. Regrets flood her thoughts as she recalls her father's advice to take the bus or a choice that she instantly refused. Meanwhile, Colleen's parents finally learn that she has disappeared when her landlord reveals that she hasn't paid her rent. Alarmed, they quickly head over to the police, desperate for answers. The scene then fasts forward by six months, and we get to know that Colleen is still under the couple's abduction. One day, Janice visits Cameron at his workplace, and reveals about her pregnancy. She also suggests releasing Colleen as the scene around them could disturb their child. However, Cameron instantly resists the idea, saying it is too dangerous. Next, Cameron devises a sinister plan to instill fear in Colleen and prevent her from escaping. He manipulates her by claiming to work for a company involved in the slave trade. Cameron cruelly asserts that Colleen is his slave and warns her that if she attempts to flee, 
the company will capture her and subject her to severe consequences. To intensify the fear, he fabricates stories of the company's merciless treatment, even threatening harm to her family if she dares to escape. When the poor girl starts getting worried, Cameron makes her sign fake documents, promising her safety and protection from the slave trading company. Janice, who is desperate to have a baby, also goes along with the lies. She doesn't argue when Cameron claims that she used to be his slave but he married her out of pity. The following day, Cameron prepares Colleen by dressing her and placing a collar around her neck. He renames her as Kay and establishes that she must regard him and Janice as her masters, following their every command. He then instructs Colleen that whenever he calls out attention, she must quickly go to a designated spot, remove her gown, and raise her hands. As expected, the scared girl agrees without any questions. Later, while carrying out her cleaning duties, Colleen comes across the Bible and tries to read it. But just then, Janice arrives and snatches it from her. She then reminds Colleen of her worthlessness and asserts that her sole purpose is to endure suffering. A few months later, when the landlord asks Cameron if he can check the furnace, the latter gets scared and tells his wife they need to move to a new place. Not long after, Janice gives birth to a baby girl, and only Cameron assists her during labor. After a while, Colleen is let out briefly so that she can meet the child, whom they have named Amber. Although Colleen is sent back right away, she is delighted to have witnessed the baby girl. A year later, the evil couple moves to a new place, far from the city. One evening during dinner, Janice learns that Colleen didn't set a fork for her. Enraged, she calls the girl lazy and a liar, who is good for nothing. Cameron also gets mad and he punishes her brutally. But after a while, Janice learns that the fork had accidentally fallen on the floor, making her feel guilty. The next morning, Cameron scares Colleen with a story about a slave who was eliminated for trying to escape. He reminds her how lucky she is that he's her master. It seems like he is preparing to take her outside. A few days later, Cameron removes Colleen's collar and dresses her in regular clothes. He then takes her out to gather firewood in the mountains making her happy. This is the first time she has left the house in years. Colleen asks if she can go home one day, but Cameron says it's unlikely. Later, while collecting firewood, Cameron accidentally hurts himself with an axe, and falls to the ground. At this moment, Colleen gets the perfect opportunity to flee, but she hesitates and stays to help him. When they return home, she tends to his injury but Janice becomes jealous and insists on taking care of it herself. As the couple prepares for bed, Janice tries to engage in coitus, but Cameron rejects her advances. Feeling unloved, she bursts out in anger, saying he has started liking the slave more than her. She then storms out of the room, but not before commanding Cameron to return Colleen to the box and never touch her again. Three years pass and Colleen remains captive under Cameron and Janice's control. On one occasion, Janice briefly releases her from the box to empty her urinal, and Colleen catches a glimpse of Amber, now a grown girl. This sight leaves her wondering how many years have passed since her abduction. One day, the family decides to go to Lake Tahoe, leaving Colleen confined in her box. Unfortunately, when they are away, a malfunction in the ventilation system causes Colleen to suffocate, leading her to experience vivid hallucinations. Suddenly, she awakens and desperately kicks the box until it breaks open. Later, the family returns from their trip to the lake. Cameron goes to check on Colleen but shockingly discovers that she is missing. He frantically searches the house, hoping she is still there, and to his relief, Colleen is hiding behind the shower clutching a Bible. As he gets ready to punish her, she honestly tells him about the broken ventilation. The scene then fasts forward five years and now, Colleen has become a part of the family. One day, Janice and Colleen attend church together. However, the priest's sermon hits too close to home for Janice, triggering painful memories of her past mistakes. Overwhelmed by guilt, she trembles with unease, but Colleen reaches out and holds her hand offering solace and support. As time passes, Janice finds it increasingly difficult to endure her husband's abusive behavior. She also develops a growing sympathy for Colleen and becomes concerned about Amber's future. After a year, 
Cameron delivers exciting news to Colleen, the company has granted her permission to visit her home. This revelation fills her with joy, but Cameron emphasizes that she must undergo obedience training before she can meet her family. Shortly after, he takes her outside and hands her a shotgun. He then instructs her to point the barrel at her own mouth and pull the trigger. The poor girl, with tears in her eyes, obeys without protesting. Fortunately, the gun doesn't discharge, and Colleen survives the harrowing ordeal. The next morning, Cameron drives Colleen to her parents' house. During the journey, he mentions the considerable expenses he incurred to make everything happen, prompting Colleen to express her gratitude. They then reach their destination, but before Colleen can reunite with her family, Cameron reminds her of the constant monitoring by the company, urging her to be cautious and avoid any mistakes. After he leaves, Colleen lies to her family that he is her boyfriend, and that they have been staying together since six years. While her parents are happy to see her after so long, her sister, Bonnie senses that something is amiss. Bonnie wants to talk about it, but their father doesn't want to spoil the moment. At night, she can't resist asking Colleen why she hasn't kept in touch for so long. However, the scared girl avoids the topic. The following morning, Bonnie begs Colleen to tell her what's bothering her. This time, the latter seriously considers spilling out the truth. But before she can open her mouth, Cameron comes to pick her up. As Colleen packs her things nervously, Cameron talks to her parents. He tells them that he and Colleen are planning to get married soon. After a while, as the two are about to leave, Bonnie inquires where they live now. Cameron confidently says they're in California, but Colleen had told Bonnie they lived in Oregon. This confirms her suspicion that something is wrong. However, she doesn't say anything at the moment. In the next scene, Cameron arrives home with Colleen and tells her something shocking. He reveals that he is actually thinking of marrying her and starting a family. Unbeknownst to them, Janice overhears everything from nearby. The next morning, Colleen sees Janice packing and asks where she's going. At first, Janice says she's visiting her parents, but later says she wants to end her marriage with Cameron. As she tries to leave, Cameron catches her and insists that she return inside the house. However, Janice has reached her breaking point and defiantly leaves with her father and Amber. Cameron is left distraught, and when Colleen tries to console him, he gets angry and reminds her that she's still his slave. He shouts the word A attention, prompting her to quickly undress and stand in the corner. Later, Cameron forcefully drags her into the basement of his shack and locks her there. Before closing the door, he tells Colleen that someone else will join her soon. He then gets into his car and drives away leaving her shivering in the cold rain. Elsewhere, we see Janice at a church, begging God for forgiveness. This is when it dawns on her that she has to help Colleen before it's too late. So, without wasting any time, she heads home, opens the door to the basement and sets Colleen free. She then helps the poor girl get dressed and tells her to leave. Colleen tries to argue that Cameron will calm down and forgive her. But Janice reveals a shocking secret. She mentions that she and Cameron had imprisoned another girl named Marlitz a year earlier. At first, Cameron pretended it was a game. But Marlitz's constant screaming drove him so crazy that he murdered her. Janice also reveals that they buried her body together, and this horrible event has deeply affected her. Some time later, Cameron returns home with a shovel, planning to go to the shack. But to his horror, Colleen is nowhere to be seen. On the other hand, Janice has taken Colleen to the bus stop, asking her to go home and live life freely. When the bus finally arrives, Colleen hesitates because she is still afraid of being caught by the slave trade company. However, Janice bluntly reveals that the story about the company is a lie, and Cameron was never involved in it. After understanding the truth, Colleen feels a sense of relief. She then gets out of the car and enters the bus. As she travels back home, Cameron can be seen devastated, crying on the floor as he has lost both Janice and Colleen. In the last scene, we get to learn that Janice confessed everything to the police to cleanse her guilt. The police conducted an investigation, and as a result, Cameron was sentenced to 104 years in prison. Janice, on the other hand, was granted immunity for testifying against him. Unfortunately, Marlitz's body was never discovered. The movie ends with the police disclosing that Colleen was held captive for 2,640 days, which is equal to seven years.